in the 13th century, the hero's journey shifted and it began to become something that now I think is much more appropriately called the anti-hero's journey. And I think everyone knows that modern dramas and cinemas and all of that are about anti-heroes. If you think about the big movies, you have like James Bond, who's a killer, works for the government, you know, the CIA kind of thing. I mean, is this the kind of hero or is this the kind of person that's the demon that you want to get away from? Or the Terminator, you know, or various other kinds of uh, uh, absurdist existentialist anti-heroes that, that have been uh, the, the main fodder of cinema in, in, uh, in the period at least uh, from the 50s, 60s onward to now. Uh, so what we need to understand is that the, the journey, the original hero's journey, was the journey to transcend the ego. And the initiation was the meeting with the guru who would give you the, the understanding of that path, and then you would deal with the obstacles that you had to face until you went through ego death. That's the, the major achievement of the journey. And after ego death, the one who returns is not the one who left on the journey. And that's a very important point, because if, it, if you are the same one who began the journey, then you haven't been on the journey. But the anti-hero's journey is the journey of the ego to try to fulfill itself on an ego level. And if we understand the anti-hero's journey, uh, the anti-hero in its more sattvic version, uh, back to Tristan and Isolde and uh, you know, the various knights of the round table who uh, broke their dharma and, uh, and, and had to deal with the, uh, the not finding the Holy Grail and uh, all of the various... Uh, uh, defeats that they faced in many of the quests uh, that that, that uh, whole mythological system is about was at least a heroic attempt to support the feeling of love. But that love was no longer a love for God. It was a romantic love. And so the anti-hero heroically, quote-unquote, broke the dharma of the society in order to go for a kind of fulfillment of its ego that turned out to be illusory. And, and was willing in the early phases, back in those days of Tristan, to suffer death and eternal damnation in hell, all for the sake of love. So there was a sattvic kind of uh, beauty to that uh, determination to, uh, to give up God for a phenomenal plain connection that one felt more of uh, a, an emotional fulfillment from because one could no longer connect to God. That connection and the possibility of that real hero's journey had already been lost to the human consciousness. And so the sattvic version of it gradually came down into a rajasic version of different kinds of quests of samurai and of uh, others that was on an ethical plane but uh, and often re required a tragic sacrifice of one's life for a community or or that kind of a uh, of of a uh, of a giving of oneself for the sake of others so there was still something heroic about it but then you you get into the tamasic versions and it's all about simply the ego uh, proving its might makes right and uh, that it can overcome the system or it can 
overcome a counter, counter system, but it is, uh, it is part of uh, a, a, uh, an egoic collective system that it never separates from. So the modern and more the postmodern ideological frame of reference in which uh, people are born, at least in, in the West, and now, of course, it's globalized, uh, is that the ego is made into an artificial hero, a pseudo-hero, because the ego doesn't really uh, uh, become heroic, <clears throat> but it's given its golden spoon, it's given uh, it, its, uh, its inflated grades in school, or it's given its scholarships, or it's given its uh, whatever so that it can be a little professor or a little... Uh, 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 judo, uh, black belt, or something like that, and the hero uh, uh, ego uh, is able to go through a kind of a candy version of attaining some kind of status and prestige, uh, but never goes through uh, the rite of passage of ego death and tries to maintain a life as an ego, never separating from the biological family system or its role in that system, but perpetuating it into biological adulthood that never reaches psychological adulthood. And so I would say that if we were gonna draw this circle again, we have to start with the refusal to separate and the pseudo-hero's journey that turns out not to bring happiness. And even though the pseudo-hero uh, in the, in the postmodern period, everyone reads an Advaita book or a book of mysticism or a book of New Age uh, spirituality and knows about chakras and knows about all of this. So it's not like they are ignorant and need to be initiated, but whatever they learn, even if they visit actual ashrams and teachers and all of that, it's a pseudo initiation that they go through. But a pseudo initiation that they believe is a real initiation. They de the ego deceives itself into thinking, yes, I've done it. Uh, they go through therapy and they say, oh yeah, I've worked through all my childhood issues. I'm done with that now. And, and they, they believe that. Uh, and so the, the ego in its, uh, its artistry of self-deception is able to fool the ego until it gets into such deep water in life with all of its splits that it can no longer manage uh, its fragmentation. And then the turning point is a karmic event in which its uh, pseudo-heroism blows up and it collapses. And uh, it's that collapse that actually begins the journey. You have to hit bottom. It's like the 12-step program. That's usually the way people get onto a, a journey of interdevelopment. Inner development now, it's about a, a failure to, to be able to go through life with the props, the addictions, the, uh, uh, the promiscuity, and the other ways that people use to support the ego because they have no inner strength, no integrity, no capacity internally to live as adults responsibly except with the help of all of those comforts. And they're still living in accord with a collectivist model of what uh, one is supposed to do in life. And it's always about some superficial achievement and not about the uh, inner journey of ego death. And so many people can ride high for a long time before that karmic event hits. At least they used to be able to. That is no longer the case. So now we're in, we're in another phase of it since the pandemic where the entire society is, has gone through a karmic event. Now it's collective because we've reached the end of the era of the ego itself. So even that journey is now uh, over. It's passé. It's past history. Now there's a, there's a, a, 
a journey of a fragmented, scared, undeveloped ego that no longer has the support of society and all of the things. It's under lockdown and uh, it never developed a capacity for critical thinking or for understanding what it needs to do in situations of adversity. It's never had to uh, flee uh, from one country to another, you know? It, it when, when there, there are refugees certainly doing that, but in the comfortable West, no, that was never the case. And so nobody can believe it's happening here. It can't happen here. We make it happen elsewhere. That was the whole purpose of imperialism, to, to make others have to deal uh, with a hero's journey of, uh, of escape from the imperialist armies that were invading like the demons and, uh, and destroying life bringing the nothing, destroying the Shire, bringing Mordor to the world, that kind of, a, uh, of an approach. But now uh, the chickens have come home to roost and it's a very different situation that the, uh, the residents uh, of, the, uh, of Mordor and its provinces that include the Shire are no longer able to deal with because there are no heroes. And there hasn't been a need to be heroes because everyone was taught that uh, Big Brother is taking care of you. So now we're in a situation where a karmic event catastrophically causes the bottom fall to fall out of one's individual life <clears throat> as well as on a collective level so that there, the, the capacity for uh, getting the kind of magical help that one thought one could get externally is no longer there. <clears throat> and now people are having to start developing their inner resources to deal with adversity and soon with food shortages and with other kinds of difficulties that are not imaginary but that our real one coming back to bite you because you took it for granted and you never really uh, dealt with uh, the forces of nature as they can uh, display themselves in, in all of their wrathfulness uh, when, when the egos have all turned rotten in relation to, their, to the natural source of our lives. <clears throat> and it's this uh, willingness to give up our power, our, our heroism, and our uh, responsibility for sustaining a culture that would not allow tyranny and militarism and, and uh, uh, corruption and degradation of the kind that has now taken over the world because there, we have forsaken the duty of that uh, heroic sustenance of society, it is now imploding on everyone. And everyone's weakened infantile ego that's never had to grow up into psychological adulthood is not able to tolerate and deal with the kinds of pressures that they are now under. <clears throat> so it's, it's this kind of a karmic event that for some people it hits in a very personal way and destroys their life. Uh, and for others it, it hits in a way that comes more gradually from uh, the whole shift in social relations and the loss of options to travel and to deal with life in a very superficial way. And that now uh, people have to face their loneliness, they have to face their, uh, their inability to know what to do with themselves when the ordinary means of dispersion of life energies is not available. And so we are now dealing with the aftermath of a karmic event collectively along with karmic events that are happening to people personally uh, in, in much more massively distributed ways. And now a real initiation is required. It's no longer an option. Do I want to go on the hero's journey or not? It's either you go on that journey or you die. You don't make it. The lower death drive will take you. 
And you can't just tread water and say, well, maybe tomorrow I'll do it. Because every day that you stay in the ego, the ego weakens. It gets more negative. It gets more self-hating. It, it gets more uh, uh, sociopathic. And, uh, and it begins to act out in ways that causes it to be rejected and thrown out of situations that it's in. Or arrested and... Uh, uh, and sent into some concentration camp or that kind of a thing. So the, the ego today has to uh, go through a real initiation that is motivated very often by fear. Not just that I'm separating and looking for my own path and trying to find my bliss and all of that. No, no, it's happening from an entirely different motivation because people are in a state of collapse and implosion. And the pseudo hero facade is not able to be kept up. <clears throat> so it's in this context now where the anti-hero has to go through a real initiation to begin the journey, not of some heroic facade or pursuit that is external uh, or, and that brings about success and, and creativity and, uh, uh, you know, uh, achievement as an artist or a scientist or philosopher or any of that. No, those options and channels are even no longer available for most. Now it has to be, you find that core of strength like Sat Prem found in the concentration camp when you're broken, when there's nothing left to hold on to. You find that core within you, or else you don't and you die. But it's that core that comes not out of some blissful uh, following your heart in, into, uh, uh, into Oz and the Emerald City. No, now you're going to have to go down into the dregs of the ego's uh, subconscious horror and fight the real demons that have never been encountered fully before because you could pacify them with various addictive processes and various uh, processes of, uh, uh, of shock absorbers that could uh, keep you going with uh, with, with money and with drugs and with alcohol and with various other forms of amusement. And as all of that drops away and one finds oneself having to face not only the loneliness but the horror of not having cared for oneself, not having grown, not having developed strengths and, and capacity to think and perseverance and ability to deal with difficulty and, uh, and lack of food and lack of shelter perhaps for many and lack of other kinds of support and, uh, and have to find their way in a world, a, a, a world of strangers and be a stranger in a strange land. Now we're, we're returning to those very ancient levels of the hero's journey. And that ancient future is forcing us to call up reserves of spiritual virtue and strength that we had not uh, had to call on for a long time and that has atrophied. And we have to now uh, discover uh, powers within us that uh, we always thought uh, were, were only uh, Hollywood movie fake uh, versions that were, were just for, for play. And now we have to test our courage for real. So the initiation has to bring us beyond, we don't go into the belly of the whale as I was saying to someone before, we have to deal with the wailing of the belly and we have to deal with our own ability to not, because we haven't developed that strength in the hara, even to commit harakiri, let alone to use that strength of the hara 
to to uh, to be able to gut it out in uh, difficult moments. But now we're going to have to go all the way to ego death because nothing short of that will give us the strength that we need. It's not in the ego. Mm -hmm.